Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and I titled this video to be an INFP in an ESTJ world and really what I mean here is of course it's an oversimplification to say that ESTJs rule the world but I want to say that we all grossly over idealize having status, being powerful, being tough, not being sensitive, being a proactive, being a go-getter, being hands-on, showing other people of yourself, sharing of yourself, putting yourself out there in the world. We're all talking about this. We're all selling, uh, reading self-help books about it. Go to a library. Half the books are about values that I think an ESTJ is going to excel at. And uh, that over-idealization of the ESTJ is quite fascinating to say the least. Now, the way I see it, INFPs get to bear the blunt edge of this ideal. Of course, all of these books also talk about not being like an INFP, not being sensitive, not being uh, a philosopher, not being too abstract, not being too much of in your own head, but to be out there to do something, to always be active, to always have something to do. And there's the social media culture there, always do something, always have fun, show pictures of yourself, show everyone how active, fun and enthusiastic and energetic you are. Yeah, it sucks. I'm sorry you have to be in that. I'm sorry you have to go through that. And I don't... I wish it was better in school. And I do feel like a lot of INFPs come out in school believing they are more stupid than they are. Yeah, often INFPs tend to top out the genius sharks. They are often more likely than other types to score as intelligent than most other types. But... Often, I don't think INFPs are known for being academically overperforming. No. The problem here often is that INFPs are taught in a way that goes against their ideals and their preferred learning style. And uh, the result of this is of course some kind of perfectionism and other kind of traumas. Like it, it's hard to go through this without being at least a little traumatized. And I, I don't talk here in a negative sense like super trauma. I'm talking like just a regular negative feeling that you've come to carry on. And it can be something, we all have something, like we can all have something that uh, bothers us, that we go through and hold on to, that bothers us. And what can I say is uh, one of the core bothers of the INFP, of course, I think it's envy. I think that's one of the core things uh, INFPs have to go through. I think INFPs are one of the most common types to type as fours, uh, aside from, for example, the ENFP personality type. And the reason for this, I think, is because of this need to protect your individuality. When everyone is telling you to change, when everyone is telling you to be something you're not, there is this uh, natural inclination to respond stubbornly and to say, you can't tell me what to do. And that's the INFP4. The INFP4 is an individualist. The INFP4 says, don't tell me what to do. And often a core here is to reject the influence of the world and to follow your own approach and to do what you want and to protect your individuality. The, of course, the stubbornness can hurt also in, to some extent because the INFP4 is deeply distrustful of all external influence. Of course, the strategies that work for ESTJs won't work for you. And when other people tell you to do all of these things, it's going to backfire on you. You might have tried to some point to be like this or to do it, but you've always felt it backfire on you. And so you don't want to do it anymore. You want to just be yourself. But the stubbornness here is also the rejection of influence and advice that is potentially good for you. When other people share insight with you or ethical beliefs with you that you know are right or that you know are valid, there is this inclination to say, shut up, I don't care, I want to make up my own mind. Like, uh, Even if you agree with these opinions as valid, even if you think it's true, you are inclined to be a little suspicious because... Who are they to tell me what I should believe and who are they to tell me what I should think is right? And there is this inclination, this stubbornness to do the opposite of what you are told, to go against this just because you want to show that you are unresistant, that you are resistant to external influence, that you are always going to protect your individuality. Now. First, uh, let's walk through a little the ideals of today's society. First, being visible. Often, extroverted sensors are the best at being visible. They thrive on the spotlight, they enjoy the stage, they enjoy getting people's eyes on them. They excel at taking the space, taking the stage and holding on to people's attention. Getting people to stay on you, to keep on listening to you, to keep on 
following you. Yeah, often introverted and intuitive types struggle to maintain people's interest and influence. Often, when our voice becomes a little too dreamy, it's a little too detached, the people have a tendency to stop listening. And uh, of course, this is also why introverted intuitives don't tend to say so much. <laughs> Uh, because uh, they think, oh, it's no bother, nobody's gonna listen to me anyways. Besides this, it's uh, obsession with power and with uh, structure and with systems. It's uh, obsession with providing, ensuring that people that what you do gives results. You have a tendency to be a little spiritual as an introverted and feeling type, and you speak more about purpose and intention, and you speak more about what you want or wish for and the thing is here it's hard to show the results or the value of what you do as an introverted and feeling type what is the value of being an introverted and feeling type what is the value i offer what do i put to the table it's not a question you tend to ask yourself because it's more about healing it's more about counseling it's more about interpersonal understanding it's more about finding your sense of purpose and who you are and um there is a value in that. Like there is a value in that. It gives peace of mind. It gives satisfaction. It gives acceptance. It gives this sense of I am good enough. It uh, I am worthwhile. I'm valuable, and it gives fulfillment. But of course, it does not offer as many tangible rewards. It does not necessarily translate into status or power or into getting some kind of status in society. And here's the thing like it can feel to the world as if INFPs don't carry any value even though they walk around with strong sense of purpose and understanding even if they are peacemakers even if they are healers even if they provide this world that is uh, that we understand that, we, that they help us understand what's wrong with the world and what's good with the world they help us understand the value the innate value of people the sanctity of life and of course, is there anything more important? I don't know, but the reason I here, the struggle here is that we tend to talk so much about the value of being successful, but not the value of understanding what success is, what happiness is, what life is. We are often so focused on the shallow state of the world, how the world looks, what appears to be good. And often INFPs are not about what appears to be good. It's not about saying something that other people will think is good. It's about saying something that is actually good from a deeper perspective and from your insight and awareness. You're an intuitive as well as a feeling type. So that means you work more on a subtle, nuanced level. And that means also that some of the things you do aren't recognized or noticed as easily if people are not on that level. If people value and understand the value of intuition, they will see you. and They will, of course, appreciate this and they will go, wow. But if everyone is incensing and if everyone is focused on the surface level, you're going to look like you don't care and like you're careless and like you're cold because your feeling and your perceiving does not come off and echo as much on that level. It's also about this uh, obsession with having systems for everything and having rules for everything and having a structure for everything, having plans for outlines and approaches and procedures for how to do everything. It's always about saying, oh, everything should be done this way, everything should be done in this order. It's always about that, but often that's not your style. That's not your style. It's not, there, is not, there is no passion in that. There is no... Um, there is no value in that for an INFP. INFPs don't work like that. And here's the thing. INFPs are constantly dismissed for their passion and that makes the six a common response. We go into the Enneagram six type when we feel that our passion has been invalidated. The things we dream of have been told to be pointless. Our art, music, who can succeed in that? Whoa. Uh, being a journalist, what? That's, uh, shouldn't you go for something more safe? Yeah, we're so told all the time to be to be safe, to be secure, to not to not uh, to to worry about our future, to worry about the success of our passion, to stare ourselves blindly at if it's rational, if it follows the common rules of the like uh, book. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're gonna be a successful YouTuber, suddenly you have to read this ten-step recipe to be successful. You have to learn about matching up thumbnails. You have to learn about setting everything perfectly, and you have to follow this recipe of success. And that's not how it works for an INFP. That's not how INFPs like to do things. 
and all of this all adds together in how we are told how to do things and we don't like it and we are you are hopefully drifting more towards understanding what is right for you and what is important for you and you are becoming more confident about your passion and you are understanding you're reaffirming the value of philosophy of introspection of detachment you're gaining a deeper understanding of your creative nature and your desire to manifest ideas and to explore options and potential you're perhaps becoming more inclined to trust your understanding and your insight and your wisdom and to not do and pursue what other people see as success but to do and pursue what you feel is meaningful to you. So here's my message for you INFPs. Nobody can compete with you. There are so few INFPs in this world, so few with your gifts and talents, so few that can see as deeply as you, so few that can understand so much about the world as you do, so few that can realize the possible, what's possible, what could change, what could be different, so few that can think out of the box like you do, so few that can achieve in the places where you can achieve so few that can go as deep as you can inside of our emotional selves our human selves and we need you we need your skills and if you trust in yourself and if you go for your passion and if you go into the world with your passion you can make a difference and I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm inciting the youth, I'm spurring for rebellion, I'm asking you to stand up to teachers, I'm asking you to question society, I'm asking you to change what people think should remain the same. Oh no, that's terrible, that's dangerous, that's scary. Still I have hope, and still I think that is what it means to be alive as an INFP. Hopefully, as an INFP, you are learning to reorient yourself towards being an INFP. You're not going into this MBTI culture thinking I'm an INFP but I need to stop being one. You're going into the I'm an INFP and I'm gonna start accepting myself just the way I am. That's the ideal, that's where you're headed next and I hope that in the future I can make some more videos for INFPs and I can help out in some way, some form to make it easier. This approach of recentering and finding your consciousness and finding out who you are. That's my goal for the next few weeks. Thank you all for being with me and for supporting me in this journey on YouTube and in everything I do. And I hope this video was able to help you understand some of the struggles INFPs have to go through. And perhaps you're going to be a little more easy on INFPs, you know, in the future. Perhaps you're not going to tell them, change. Perhaps you're going to say, wow, that's really cool. Tell me more about yourself. Tell me more about how you work.